Well, today we're going to unpack the idea of when someone says, do as I say, not as I do. Mm, I like that. That should be good. Hey, he's Kyle. I'm Chris, and we're the Bible Guys. Well, I called us the Bible Guys right. because Jeff Forrester's out of town. That's right. He's uh, he's actually uh, with the Timothy Initiative. Yes. He's the chairman of yes. the board, by the way. Yes. And he's raising millions of dollars, quite literally. He's killing uh, it. To, to actually um, helping raise. Yes. Uh, in order to, you know, plant churches around the world. Really cool. So I, and actually, he'll be with us next week, though. He'll be he, back. He will. He'll be back So if Monday. you're like, man, I need this guy to go, it's okay. Yeah, Jeff yeah. will be back. Hey, okay. Kyle's been great all week long. Don't, don't, give, me, don't give me any hate it. on YouTube, please. Yes. <laughs> so Kyle Dobbenmeyer, a uh, good friend of mine worked together for two years and uh, he's on our staff at Heritage Church where is where, where we all work yeah and um, so today Kyle I want to ask you something that Jeff always asks me okay uh, one of the one of the segments that Jeff always loves to ask is what made Chris mad this week okay so we're gonna turn the tables oh how the turntables okay <laughs> and we're, and we're gonna tables. ask the question what made Kyle mad this week okay 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 you know, honestly, um, I, what I what I what has made me mad this week, I actually think you'll be able to relate to a little bit, okay? And it gets me frustrated. I think our viewers will understand this. Um, I am very aware of the fact that our phones, our TVs, things like that, are listening to us, right? Quote unquote, listening to us, right? Yeah, sure. And and they're they're hearing what we're talking about. They're hearing about. They're watching our Google searches and therefore uh, curating what we, sh- you know, on Amazon and Facebook and Instagram, the very things that we're searching. I'm very aware that that happens, right? But when it like happens to you and you witness it, it, like I don't know about you, man, but it just makes me mad. I don't know mm-hmm. why. It just bothers me to know that like I'm being listened to or that my searches and all that stuff. So I'll give an example. Uh, this past week, or actually this last month, it's been a very you know a lot of po- political conversations have been going on, right? And 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 people are watching the news and that sort of thing. And I happen to be having two days in a row conversations with uh, people about politics that they were very fired up about something. And they, I'm not going to say which, I'm not going to even, I'm not going to go there. I don't want to step in that. Um, but but they were very fired about something. Sure enough, on my Instagram ads over the last couple of days, I am getting uh, these ads for these different movies and documentaries and things like that that were referenced to me while we were talking in conversation. Yeah. I don't know about you, but that is like, that's bizarre. And it's it kinda, creepy. It kind of makes me mad. And I just yeah. want to ask if, if anybody actually is watching this and you've had an experience like that where you've you know, been talking about something, you've been searching something. I'd like to hear about it because I'll give you an example of one that just blew my mind. So obviously this past week I've been getting these ads, but there's one time last year, I promise you, Chris, there was a time I was driving down Hall Road and I thought about something, legitimately mm-hmm. thought about something in my mind and didn't talk to anybody about it, didn't Google search it. Later that night, I was looking at my Amazon order or Amazon, I was scrolling through and they had an ad for the very thing I was thinking about. Can you explain that to me? Uh, coincidence. And you think it's coincidence? Well, yeah. I dude, mean, I'm telling. It was the exact dude, dude, same. It's not artificial intelligence. <laughs> I'm t- it's it not was... self-aware, you know, living <laughs> beings. The Holy Spirit <laughs> within me yeah. was no. I'm it, it, part of me. I agree because yeah. I was like, I can't explain this physically. Yeah. I can't explain. It. But the chances of this, like literally driving down the road, I'll, and I I'll thought bet, of something. I bet you said. I bet you said it in a conversation with Maybe somebody. Maybe I did. Yeah, you. Maybe probably, I well, did. you had to have. I had to have. I'm just saying it's it was programmed not to read your thoughts. <laughs> These aren't ESP. Are we gonna have more people mad thinking yeah. that I just said that? You know? No, 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 no. I'm just laughing at the concept because yeah. because for you it probably was super freaky. Oh, out. it was very scary. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, to know. It made me mad too because I'm just like, what is going on? You know, you kind of think that in some ways you live in a world of privacy. You don't want to believe that, right? Right. They're living in a world of privacy. Unfortunately, that's not the case, and yeah. so it makes me mad. Yeah, well, one of my favorite places to travel is Cuba. I've been there four yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I've and, been there once and, as well. And, oh my gosh, beautiful. And more and more, I feel like we're heading toward Cuba. <laughs> More than Cuba's heading toward us. Speaking of that, yeah, um, there was a, there was one time we were driving, uh, you know, with some, I obviously can't say name, none of that kind of stuff. We were driving with people, and they were speaking about political stuff, and they yeah. had to cover their mouths when they would say things. And I was so confused. I was like, "What is going on?" But they said that there's cameras that actually watch who's going through and what conversations. You're talking about are, in Cuba, yeah, in Cuba, oh yeah. for sure, yeah, and so like stuff for like sure. that. That's woof. Yeah, we're yeah. going there. All right. All right, so um, uh, I am. <laughs> by the way, if you if you have any complaints about uh, all of our references, send them to k.dobbenmeyer at heritagechurch.com. 
Yes, so. I will. I will delete them. No, I'm just kidding. I would love to read them. Actually, you know, one of the things I was going to point out too, if you are somebody who's on social media on Facebook, we would love for you to share our page. Uh, ask your friends. The cool thing about it is every single people that, or every single one of the people that watch this, you have hundreds, if not thousands, of people you could influence. Just share it. You never know how. Maybe you know. We talked yesterday about watering uh, the seed, and or sorry, planting the seed, watering it, and that sort of thing. You never know how you may be planting a seed in someone's life. So thank you so much for sharing, liking, commenting, all that stuff. I agree. And so today we're going to continue on in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Yes. We're going to read verses 1 through 21, and Paul is going to be talking about a lot of things. So let's mm-hmm. just dive right into it. All right, this is what he has to say. So look at Apollos and me as mere servants of Christ who have been put in charge of explaining God's mysteries. Now, a person who is put in charge as a manager must be faithful. As for me, it matters very little how I might be evaluated by you or by any human authority. I don't even trust my own judgment on this point. My conscience is clear, but that doesn't prove I'm right. It is the Lord himself who will examine me and decide. So don't take, so sorry, don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns, for he will bring our darkest secrets to light and he will reveal our private motives. Then God will give to each one whatever praise is due. Dear brothers and sisters, I have used Apollos and myself to illustrate what I've been saying. If you pay attention to what I have quoted from the scriptures, you won't be proud of one of your leaders at the expense of another. For what gives you the right to make such a judgment? What do you have that God hasn't given you? And if everything you have is from God, why boast as though it were not a gift? You think you already have everything you need. You think you're already rich. You have begun to reign in God's kingdom without us. I wish you really were reigning already, for then we would be reigning with you. Instead, I sometimes think God has put us apostles on display, like prisoners of war at the end of a victor's parade, condemned to die. We have become a spectacle to the entire world, to people and angels alike. Our dedication to Christ makes us look like fools, but you claim to be so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are so powerful. You are honored, but we are ridiculed. Even now, we, are, we go hungry and thirsty, and we don't have enough clothes to keep warm. We are often beaten and have no home. We work wearily with our own hands to earn our living. We bless those who curse us. We are patient with those who abuse us. We appeal gently when evil things are said about us. Yet we are treated like the world's garbage, like everybody's trash, right up to the present moment. I'm not writing these things to shame you, but to warn you as my beloved children. For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. So I urge you to imitate me. That's why I've sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of how I follow Christ, just as I teach in all the churches wherever I go. Some of you have become arrogant, thinking I will not visit you again. But I will come, and soon, if the Lord lets me, and then I'll find out whether these arrogant people just give pretentious speeches or, or whether they really have God's power. For the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. It says this, which do you choose? Should I come with a rod to punish you or should I come with love and a gentle spirit? That's how we wrap up uh, those verses here today in chapter four. Yeah. So Paul is sort of laying it down. Yeah, he, I'm the he spiritual father. Yep. And let me just put you in your place just a little bit. Yes. And, yes. and you, you decide how I should come. Uh, because I have the authority as your spiritual father, Yes. Uh, whether or not you're going to accept me or not. It's just wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and I love how Paul, uh, I mean, let's just dive right into it yeah. when he says in verse 16, so I urge you to imitate me. Yeah. And that's why I've sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. Uh, so my life application study Bible, which we love yeah. and promote yeah. uh, and get no money for doing that, by the way, a mm. side note, uh, is 1 Corinthians 4, verse 17 it says this, Timothy had traveled with Paul on, on Paul's second missionary journey. Uh, in Acts chapter 16, it references that. So that's, that's in our series. Yeah. And, uh, and he was a key person in the growth of the early church. Timothy probably did not deliver this letter to Corinth, but more likely arrived there shortly thereafter. Uh, Timothy's role was to see that Paul's advice was implemented mm. and then return to Paul and report to the church's progress. So uh, we we came across Timothy first back in Acts chapter 16. He became a very important person. He traveled with Paul on the second missionary journey. And then Paul wrote this letter and it was delivered. And then Timothy was the follow-up. Yeah. And he was the one to come back and sort of see whether or not, you know, they received Paul's letter. 
It's really cool. I actually think that Paul, Timothy, like just the way, even though the way the church is modeled in that way, just really cool. I know we talk a lot about that um, in how we disciple other people, but it's like, it's, it's again, not making it about the person, right? Although we have to have leaders, we have to have organization and structure, but really ultimately it's about, it's about, but it's about Jesus. It's pointing to him, which he talks a lot about in this, as we've talked about this past week as well. Um, I actually think verse five, just want to point out verse five. I think that one's interesting. I'm actually curious to see your take on this one mm. where he says, so don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns for he will bring our darkest secrets to light. Um, and will reveal our private motives. Then God will give to each one, whatever praise is due. What stands out to you from that? Well, you know, I, I think that the, the context of the rest of the chapter yeah. gives insight to what Paul is meaning. Because what he is doing is, is he is sort of saying that there are people who may uh, talk, but, you know, like later on, for instance, in verse number uh, 20, he says, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk, mm -hmm. but is living God's power. And I think that's sort of the main encompassing thought. What he's saying is, he's saying, don't judge anybody because on the surface, some people may talk a lot of talk, yeah. but in the inside, they're empty mm. because they're not filled with God's power. And then there are other people who, you know, they're filled with God's power and they may not be so eloquent. So he says, you know, don't cast your judgment on somebody's spiritual maturity. And so, by the way, this, this sort of lends itself to, uh, you know, the idea of judging others yeah. because, uh, you know, everybody in the Christian world and especially in the non-Christian yeah. world they would say, don't judge the Bible me. says, yeah. don't judge. Don't judge me, yeah. Don't yep, judge yep. me. You're judging me. Yep. Uh, I remember one time watching a, watching a, uh, 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 I love Parenthood. Did you mm. ever see Parenthood? Oh, yeah, great show. Great Parenthood. Mm. When, when actually the two brothers were sitting down and one of them in total and proper loving context says, hey, man, I'm worried about you. I'm worried about your lifestyle because you, you've been acting this way and I'm just really concerned. Mm. And, and the brother goes, don't judge me. Yeah. I thought to myself, dude, he was doing everything but not judging you. Yeah. He was doing everything the right way, and yet the world hangs on to this phrase, yeah. and they love putting the Bible onto that and saying, the Bible says, don't judge me. Yeah. Well, listen, it's really, really clear. Um, it, things are really clear about judging. Number one, the first thing is this. We are actually called to judge, judge insiders. Yep, 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 We're yep. called to judge insiders. We're just not called to judge outsiders. Yeah, yeah. In other words, insiders are those who already believe in Christ and, and are Christians. Outsiders are those who do not believe in Christ. So we can never, Paul says, we cannot expect the world right. to act or think or behave or believe like we do. Yeah. So don't judge them. Yeah. But he says, but actually we're called to judge insiders, but the word judge there actually is given in the context of love. Mm. So we're supposed to say, just like those two brothers in that sitcom, yeah. we're supposed to sit them down in the context of love and say, I would like to spiritually challenge you. And by the way, we're supposed to judge people in their sin. Yes. Right? And so it's very specific. And that's, I think, the difference here, right? Yes. And what he's saying, the sin part versus even how they're worshiping. Don't judge others by how they're worshiping. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so we're called to judge others by their character. Hey, listen, yeah. I want to I sharpen you. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you. I've been noticing some things in your life that... That, you know, I just want to encourage you to, you know, look at God's word. These things aren't right. And those are sinful things. Yep. But but to actually judge people according to other things, we're yeah. not we're not called to do that. Yeah. So Paul is saying on the outside, don't judge because God knows the inside. Yeah. And I would even say, too, you have to remember the context in which uh, Paul is preaching. They were they were a newer church, but also there's a lot of divisions forming among them. I can imagine mm -hmm. the petty stuff that was going on. The petty mm -hmm. stuff then that we still with, still deal with today, two thousand years later, right? The petty stuff about how people are worshiping, how they are serving God, and what they're doing in the church. And I think it's and it's funny how the church um, and Christians, like our biggest enemy, is ourselves and mm -hmm. the actions and the judgments and the perceptions we have. And oftentimes, you know, uh, we've even given messages and talked about the idea of like why are Christians so unChristian? And I think sometimes that's the reason why so many non-Christians have no interest in us because they see so much division. They see much, so much fighting and, and all that stuff. And they say, hey, why would I ever want that? You know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's also... Yeah. Well, I think uh, I, I remember watching an interview from Bono. Okay. And Bono said, uh, yeah, he goes, I don't have a problem with Christ. He goes, I just, I just, I just have a problem with all the Christians. Yep. Right. Yep. <laughs> which is, which is, uh, which you, is, you know, warranted. I think that's a Gandhi quote too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's focus on this for just a second mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so Paul calls them out and says, hey, you have one spiritual father, yep. right? For I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. So I urge you to imitate me. Yeah. So that's sort of what we talked about. Um, do as I do, not do as I say. Yeah. The idea that Paul is actually saying, 
do as I do, right? And, and do as I say and do as I do, because mm. Paul is actually living a life worthy of being imitated, mm. which is why he sort of said, hey, you're powerful, I'm not. Yeah. You know, you're these things that I'm not. We have, we have humbled ourselves in humility. We barely have clothes to, to wear to keep warm. We have done everything we possibly can. And, and, and we even, per, we even uh, bless those who persecute us, mm. right? We even, we even uh, what does he say? We, we actually were patient with those who, who, who abuse us is what he said. We bless those who curse us. Mm. And so live and follow Christ as I have. And Paul says that with confidence. Yeah. And that's a great question for all of us to ask. Could we actually say that with conviction to look at our children, mm. for that's example, as, as parents and say, do as I do mm. or, or, or are yeah. we, are do we, as I do or not as I say. Yeah. Right. Or, or are we the kind of person, mm. you know, that has to fall into the category, do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Because Paul is saying, do as I say, because I am doing what I'm saying. Yeah, right. that's really good. So, I think that's a good challenge. I mean, 100% because it happens so often where my kids, you know, you use reference parenting and it's so true where there'll be something that happens and then my kids will be like, well, don't you tell us this? I'm like, yes, <laughs> you're, <laughs> right. You're, you're, you're right. right. So, so right. Uh, and then even as Christians so often, you know, like I think we, we give messages sometimes and you're doing this way. And then, and then it's, it's funny because it's the very things we preach or teach and this relates to all Christians, right? I just heard a message uh, from a guy um, from Red, Rock, Red Rocks Church. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's, he's mm-hmm. a great young up-and-coming speaker, wrote a book called um, Attacking Anxiety, which is a great book on anxiety and overcoming all that, or working on overcoming all that. Uh, Red Rocks Church, and he talks about how um, he had years of battle as a pastor, battling anxiety and depression, like crippling anxiety and depression. Mm. And then um, years go by, and finally he has a breaking point where he has to be real. And when people were coming and confronting him, they were using the same Bible verses that he would have used for other people. Mm. And he was like, I had to have this moment where I realized that I'm giving all this advice to people, but I'm not living that advice. Like mm. I can say it, but what am I actually doing? Um, and, and so I would just encourage people even to check out that book or, mm. or follow his story because wow. there's sounds, a lot more to it than sounds that. Sounds great. Yeah. There's a lot more to it than, than just that. But it's, it's a reminder for all of us that we need to kind of walk the talk. Yeah. So uh, again, in my uh, notes in the Bible... It's, it talks about setting an example for others and how Paul told the Corinthian believers to imitate him uh, as the body of Christ. Uh, there are so many different examples that are listed here that I want to just make reference. In Matthew 11, Jesus told his followers to learn from his example of gentleness and humility mm. when he said, take my yoke upon you. Yeah. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul urged fellow believers to follow his examples of enthusiasm, perseverance, and maturity when he said, pattern your lives after mine. So he didn't just say it here. He said it to the church in Philippi. Um, in first Thessalonians chapter one, the new Christians at Thessalonica received training in discipleship from Paul and even suffered. They expressed what they had learned. When Paul wrote, you imitated both of us and the Lord, and you have become an example yourselves. Wow. In first Timothy chapter one, uh, Paul used his unworthiness to receive Christ as an example so of grace, so that no one would uh, um, uh, would hold back from coming to Christ mm-hmm. when he said this, but God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience, even with the worst of sinners. And then finally, in First Corinthians, First Peter chapter 5, uh, Peter taught Christian leaders to lead by example, not by commands, when he said, don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. And honestly, when I when I see you reading those out, it just makes me think that we have such a great example to follow. Follow. Mm. Obviously, we've got Jesus, the ultimate, right? But at the same time, you have all these people who are living by an example. And then also the Bible is full of the opposite of that, right? Mm. We see so many stories of men and women who made serious mistakes and like things that you and I could never do. We would we would mm. never do, right? And our listeners would never do. But at the same time, it's so interesting that God still chooses to use them in his holy book, right? So we can learn what not to do, but then also you have such great examples of, of what to do, which I think is just great that you listed those off. Um, keep talking. I'm yeah. going to Google something. Okay, great. I love that. You know, another thing too that, that I actually uh, you know, want to ask too for anybody who's listening as well, we talk about being imitators of Christ and following in Paul's example and being that, but also just to even ask like, what examples are you following in your life? I think it's so important for us to be strengthened by one another. He referenced the parenthood scene. And I think from in my life, there's been so many times where people have had to come to me with correction or with challenges or thoughts. And it's like, you have to be 
humble enough to submit and understand and be and, and be humble in that, but also to have great examples to follow. I think it's so important. And so if your only examples to follow are what you're seeing on social media, what you're seeing on the news, or or maybe even co- whatever, if that's your examples, I think you're going to imitate those who are around you and those you surround yourself with. I think, but I think if your if your examples are what you're seeing in the Bible, if you're constantly taking in God's word, if you're written on your heart, I think you're going to start to look like Jesus and imitate Christ. So, yeah. So I Googled this because it just popped up in my mm-hmm. mind in these very moments. Um, when I was younger, um, you know, I, I was a part of a church that held, had all this like uh, Southern gospel music, mm-hmm. you know, okay. those kind of things. <laughs> yeah. And I used to listen to this cassette tape. Okay. As a matter of fact, I remember it was blue in color. And it was by this artist named Steve Green, who, you okay. know, uh, the lyrics read more than the song sings, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. the song's pretty, uh, you know, churchy, uh-huh. you know, okay. ooh, kind okay, of thing, okay, right? Okay. Anyway, but this song is unbelievably inspiring, mm. and it's called Find Us Faithful, which is this topic, and it was by Steve Green. So let me read just the chorus. This is how it goes. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe, and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Oh, that's really good. Isn't that really good? That's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Do it, it on a Sunday one time. It's, it's just a beautiful... Well, I don't think... <laughs> oh, may all who come May not fly. A new version. The lyrics us. are great, though, and that's the, that's the point here of the find whole thing. Find us faithful. <laughs> He's saying, follow my example, right? And that's kind of what we're getting at today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, right? We'd have to we have to spruce that one up melodically. <laughs> yes, but um, but yeah, and so I, I just love how all the way through the Bible, um, you know, again we just read them. There's different examples, and so I would just say this: it's a great encouragement for us to know that Paul is saying that the kingdom of God is not just words, yeah, but it's actually uh, living in God's power. Mm-hmm. So don't just walk talk the talk, but walk yeah. the walk. Yeah. And so I think that's a really good place to end. We've we've sort of come to that time. So do as I say and as I do. Is yes, what we should be that's a great way to wrap do it up. Do as I say and as I do. Yeah, okay. and, and even though we'll be imperfect doing it. Yes, 100%. That's the goal. And it's okay to admit when you're imperfect, right? It's just yes. at least, yeah. Okay. Yes. That's good. So we will see you back with Jeff Forrester on that's Monday. Right. We're very grateful for yes. Ka- to Kyle. Thanks for uh, having we'll, me, guys. Yep. We'll see you next time on The Bible, guys.